Hey guys, good morning and welcome to another episode of Behind the Closed Doors. Today, the workshop, the light of the old masters or classical lighting. Now I think from all the workshops that I teach that this actually is one of the most intense and most difficult lighting wise. And that's mainly because today we are using a lot of flags. And flags you can use greatly for enhancing your light, steering your light, but most of all, of course, making sure that you get those nice dramatic shots. But using flags is a little bit tricky. And one thing that you have to remember is if you place your flag close to the light source, the edge transfer or shadow transfer will be very soft, so it's more like a wraparound effect. If you place that flag really close to your model, it will be more sharper. So we're going to play a lot with that. Okay, so that classical lighting, why is that so important? Most of all, it's about light control, but behind that, it's actually understanding what light does. And this is something that you see in a lot of photography nowadays. People seem to be a little bit afraid of shadows sometimes. As long as it's open, as long as there's big light sources, everything goes okay. But as soon as you start using Fresnels or those really small spotlights, people just start to panic and they go like, oh, that shadow doesn't do what I want. Oh, that shadow goes somewhere where I didn't expect it to. Always remember, follow the line of light with your eyes. In other words, if you aim your light source, just try to visualize that line. And you can see where shadows fall on the face of the model, but also on the backdrop. And today it's all about controlling those shadows. So it's not that much about lighting, it's more about shadow control. And I think for all photography that goes, it's not about lighting, it's about shadows. If you master those shadows, the lighting will become very easily. And of course those two are connected. So it's not like I'm not using lighting, I'm only using shadows. Those are connected. And as soon as you start to realize that, that's a big step up from going to total light control or being somebody that just by accident sometimes gets a great shadow. You wanna be in control and you wanna make sure that every time you take that shot, the shadow does exactly what you want. And that's what today is all about. So I'm ready. Our model for today is Nadine, so we have some cool styling. And I'm really looking forward to this workshop because this workshop really takes everything out of me. This is the one where we go all out with flags and shadows and just awesome. Hey guys, now during the intro you probably already saw the brands x rite and LoomCube. And those companies make the vlog possible. So thank you so very much for those. But what are those brands? Well, x rite of course you already know from color analyzers. But also, and sometimes you don't see this in the vlog, but this is one of the most important shots during a photo shoot. This is where we actually create one, of course, the white balance, but also a profile for your camera. This is called the Color Checker Passport. And this is the version 2 where you now also have an 18% gray card on the other side of the X-Rite Color Checker Passport. But they also have one for video. They have big, big targets for video and, of course, photography. And it's a company that's aimed totally at color accuracy and that's something of course that's very very close to my heart because I just love working with colors and I have to make sure that every time I shoot I have that same base point because then my presets works great and something like the color checker passport is very very vital for that. Now the other brand is LoomCube and this is really really cool if you're on location and you need a little bit of extra light. We all know those situations right where you're traveling and you don't want to carry a lot of gear even a small strobe is too much and you still want to light up some of that areas under the eyes or maybe you want some extra accent lighting if it's a little bit darker and that's actually where LoomCube comes in really really nice. These are small LED lights and they're incredibly bright. Um, somebody told me like, hey, there's a competition that's only half of the price. We tested them out and they're like one quarter of the light output. So you need four for one loom cube. So, well, then actually the competition is more expensive because you need more. So the new version of loom cube, and I wanted to show you this is really interesting because now you don't only get loom cubes, you also get snoots, gels, diffusion panels and diffusion panels well for a small light source but okay and we have grids which are really awesome and of course a little bit of a dome and yes barn doors 
Isn't that cool? And the thing that we actually always do with loom cubes is that we don't use them straight on, but we use a selfie stick. So we put them on the selfie stick, and now with an extended selfie stick, you can hold it next to your model and take the shoot. It's a really handy tool to have in your bag because they are always there. They run on an internal battery pack, so you can just charge them via USB. I can't recommend them highly enough. It's a small light source, so it's harsh lighting, but it's one of the coolest light source to work with. And again, if you have control over your shadows, you're not afraid of those harsh shadows. You actually use them to the max. And that's how we use Loom Cubes. One of my favorite images with the Loom Cubes? Well, I don't have a favorite image, but let me just show you a few images that we created with Loom Cubes. And I think you're gonna be very, very enthusiastic about those. And then it's time for the workshop. For the first set I'm using the Hansel Beauty Disc and the cool thing about that Hansel Beauty Disc and it also fits on other brands so make sure you check one out if you're in the market for a beauty dish is that you can use a deflector. Now the deflector is normal, it's standard for all beauty dishes, that's how a beauty dish works right? It steers the light towards the deflector, the deflector sits it back into the dish and that spreads it out. Now one of the things that you can experience with a beauty dish is that the light isn't exactly even. There can be a little bit of a hot spot or a dead spot in the middle where the deflector is. Now, of course you can change the deflector for for example a translucent one or a milk one depending on how you call it. But in the case of the Hansel there's actually a very nice structure inside. So they use two grids, one bigger and one softer and it really helps out to spread that light more equally. And the other cool thing that you can do with this is actually, and you saw that in the video, take out the deflector but put in a grid. And that was all I did, the open beauty dish with a grid in the middle. Now what happens is you get a really focused beam of light on your model and everything on the sides just fades away really nicely. And it gives you an absolutely awesome image. And turn it into black and white, high contrast, instant art. So let's look at those images. For set number two, we're using the beauty dish again, only this time we're also using a little bit of a side light. In this case, we're using the light tools grid in a strip light. The nice thing about this light setup is that you can actually use flex to well steer the light. And that's one of the most important things when you study classical lighting or when you want to control your lighting, use those flags. And always remember, if the flag is close to the light source, it fades around that light source, so you have a very, very soft shadow transfer. If the flag is closer to the model, it will be harsher. Now, in this case, you see that the flag was almost immediately against the light source. So that means that I used the light to light the face of the model. And after that, we slowly just graduated, let the light fall off on the bottom. So it's not really an aimed light source in this case. It's more like we want light on the model and we want a little bit of a fade out underneath. And that's why that flag is so close to that light source. Now, when you look at the video, you actually see that with the strip light, I also use a flag. The reason for this is also very simple. I wanted the light to hit a side of her face, but not too much on the side. 
And by using the flag really close, it still hits the side of our model, but it's more in modulation. So in other words, the face gets, for example, the full blast and the side just gets a little bit less. And this is because he was wearing white. And if you wear white, you're prone to blow out those whites. So that's why we're actually using that flag to make sure that she still gets a lot of light on the side of her face, but we don't blow out the whites. And that's why flags are absolutely awesome and every studio should have at least, well, two. And of course you can also use cardboard or whatever because real flags can be expensive. But listen to me, they're worth every little cent that you put in them because the light control you get is just absolutely amazing. The third setup, really nice. It's our new set and we're still figuring out what we want to do with this set. And one of the attendees, and that's the cool thing about my workshops, everybody can ask whatever they want. And during the workshops, I will literally explain the questions they have in a set. In this case, one of the questions was, how can we combine continuous lighting with strobes? And that's actually a question you hear a lot. Now we started out with that light beam, uh, sorry, the, the light snake and actually a chandelier. And on the side for balance, we also put some, um, yeah, it's not flowers, but it sticks with, with lights. You know what I mean, right? You saw it on the video. We started out with the strobe on our model, strip light with the light tools grid. So we have a really narrow beam of light, but somehow it didn't look right. And I've used this trick so many times and it mostly works. But in this case, the result was actually better if you don't fire the strobe. This is something that might confuse some people, but remember that your strobe is of course a strobe, but it also has a modeling light. If you don't fire the strobe, you can still use that modeling light to light your scene. And in this case, using only the modeling light just gave us a way more interesting image. So that's actually the images you're going to see now. So I'm still using a grid with the light tools. Sorry, I'm still using a strip light with a light tools grid on a Hansel strobe, of course, but I'm not using the strobe as a strobe. I'm only using the modeling light. And I think the outcome speaks for itself. I really, really like these shots. Now, of course, you can't have a classical lighting workshop without using Fresnels, right? In this case, I'm using a let go Fresnel and it's actually straight on our model. The nice thing about Fresnels is that one, they have a beautiful light quality, but also that you can move the strobe or in this case, the continuous lighting forwards and backwards. And it means that that beam of light will get bigger or smaller. And it's an incredibly powerful tool. They sometimes are sold on the theater spots. So if you're on eBay, just find theater spots and you can use them too. We use original Fresnel. So we have one for strobes, which are really expensive. And we have, of course, two in our studio, which we normally use for video, but also for photography. And those are let goes. Now the let goes are a little bit more affordable, but they're still, it's a lot of money. Let's be honest. When you go on eBay or Marktplatz in the Netherlands, you can literally find theater spots for a little over, let's say 50, 50 to 100 euros. Let me just show how one of those looks because I have one here. And that's actually a Fresnel that we bought on Marktplatz, the Dutch eBay. And what I did is just removed everything from the Fresnel and then you can actually use it with a strobe. So you use two stands, one with the strobe and the strobe then actually is aimed inside that Fresnel and one stand where we actually put the Fresnel on. So it's, it's a lot of hassle, but it works. So that's a very cheap solution and it's awesome lighting. Okay, finally, when you look at those images from today, you see that we played a little bit with focus, right? So what did I use? You guys know I love Lens Baby, right? And today we're actually using the Composer 2 with both the 35 mil, that was the one we used on the set, and the 85 portrait. And the 85 is an 
absolutely amazing razor sharp lens. And on the composer you can just make that nice tilt effect. And I just love how that looks in images like this. Some people will say the effect is a little bit too much. Well then bend it a little bit less or stop down to let's say f8. But those lens babies, oh, lens flares and creativity, that's all lens babies. So make sure you check them out. If you're stuck and you think like, hey, I want to up my photography a little bit more, check out those lens babies. And that's my personal opinion, by the way. I'm not being paid by lens baby or whatever. I just love those lenses. Okay, that was it for today. Tomorrow, the workshop small strobes. And that's actually with our new Nissan strobes. So make sure you check out tomorrow's episode. For now, thank you so very much for watching, guys. If you like what we do, you know the drill. Subscribe, like, leave comments below. We really appreciate that. But we mostly appreciate it when you tell other people about our channel. If you like the look in those images, make sure you check out my preset packs online. Don't pay too much for preset packs. We sell them for 10 to 15 euros. That's a nice price for a preset pack. Don't pay 199 nine euros for a preset pack that's ridiculous you can make them yourself so but for 15 10 euros i think that's a great start for your looks i think that was it see you again tomorrow bye guys